name's Keith. I don't have any slides for this talk. Um, I don't have a pitch to give. I'm not, fun, fun, I'm not fundraising. None of you all in the room are customers. Uh, my customers are 5 to 10, 11 years old. I just want to tell you today about the, the problem that I'm focused on solving. Started this a few years ago. Um, it's what I plan to dedicate the rest of my life to. We're working on this together with a good friend of mine, Doug. I'll give you a historical example first to start off with. So in World War II, American military set up bases all around the world, strategic spots. One of these was in the South Pacific Islands. And when the troops arrived, they cleared a big clearing in the field. The native islanders showed up. What was interesting was this was the first time they had any contact with the modern world. And so they watched these soldiers clear this, set up a control tower, get all the equipment ready, and then these big cargo planes start landing. These, this is magical to them. These, these planes open up, out come jeeps and motorcycles, and washing machines, and candy, and canned goods. I mean, you can just imagine seeing something like this for the first time when you've just lived in the woods. So this lasted for a few years. And eventually, World War II wraps up, troops pull out. And a few years after this, some researchers were back visiting the, visiting the island. And they noticed something really interesting. Along the same clearing, they saw the islanders set up a whole series of little fires. And one of them would take a bamboo pole, march around. Another one would go to the end of the clearing, take two sticks. There's a guy sitting up in a tree with two shells on his ears. They're imitating all the motions that they saw the soldiers do because they want those cargo planes to come back. Obviously, they, they, they don't understand the substance behind what they're doing. They're just going through the motions. And this is the same thing that's happening in science classes around the country every single day, most of the science classes. This is the problem that I want to solve. So. My company's Mystery Science. I started four years ago with a good friend of mine, Doug. And first, I just want to make this problem real to you. I mean, most of you in the room went through the same system that I've got two young kids now. They're going through it right now. You sit in science class, and you know, your teacher tells you, shows you cross-section of the Earth, tells you there's a molten core right there in the middle. You know, above that, there's got the the mantle and, and the crust. You probably labeled the diagram. I bet you guys all got an A on that quiz. No teacher ever tells you that people have only drilled six miles into the earth. We've never even gotten through the crust. But somehow you're supposed to believe that there's a molten core down there, or what more, believe that we think we know what's, what's in the middle of the earth. And the same thing's true. You learn to label the, the, all the parts of a cell, you know, the, mito, uh, the mitochondria and the nucleus and the cytoplasm. You remember doing that. The elements of the periodic table, the steps of photosynthesis, the requirements of plants' life. Plants need sunlight and, and air. They eat air. That's kind of crazy. That tectonic plates cause earthquakes. When someone first proposed that, that was incredibly controversial. I mean, yeah, right, the continents are moving and colliding with one another. That's not something you just believe on, on a bold assertion. And so this is, this is what we're, we're doing to children today. We're in the, in the spirit of scientific literacy, they call it. You know, it's telling that we call it literacy. Science class is really taught like it's literacy class. It's like, like it's vocabulary. Kids learn a bunch of scientific words. They learn how to recite all those words just like a good literacy class should unfold. And that's the way that science is taught. You know, and, and half the crowd argues, like, well, okay, well, I mean, that's better than nothing, right? I mean, we could not be teaching these kids science at all, so at least they're learning a set of scientific words and definitions, and so there's some basic understanding that they have. But it actually achieves the opposite effect. You know, today we, we're, we're in a world where creationism, creationism is on the rise, and diseases that were once eradicated by vaccines are starting to come back, the parents are concerned about vaccinating their kids. I mean, you have one authority figure who tells you, absolutely, yes, you should give your kids vaccines. And then another authority figure that tells you, absolutely don't, no, it's going to cause autism. And it's not like anyone has been prepared to actually think through bold claims. 
and, and try and understand how you would evaluate whether those are true or not. And so this is the world that we're creating. We're, we're in this world where all of us enjoy such incredible lives made possible by science and technology. The transportation that got us here, the, the gadgets that make our life more convenient, the, the entertainment, the, the advancements in healthcare that doubled our lifespan in the last 200 years. But remarkably, almost no one who grows up today, you graduate high school in America, you spent a thousand hours sitting in science class. Spend a thousand hours in a kitchen trying to learn how to cook and you'll have some sense of how to cook, but a thousand hours in science class. And in spite of that, people have n not really a scientific understanding of the world. They, they've collected a whole bunch of supposedly true facts and they can recite them with the best of them. Uh, most of us have trouble labeling, labeling those diagrams now, but that's, that's the problem that we have to solve. So. The first piece of this, this problem that we decided to tackle was trying to fix what's actually happening in classrooms. Um, so mystery science is helping elementary teachers teach science. And so the basic premise early on was, you know, we have to reach people when they're young. I've got a six-year-old and a three-year-old. And when kids turn about four or five years old, they get incredibly curious about the world. They just start asking tons of questions. It's not like you have some five-year-olds who are interested in science and others who aren't. To a five-year-old, they're just interested in the world. The first time they notice water falling from the sky, and it's like, what, water, how did it get up there? And they see a, you know, a magnet stick to fridges, and they're like, what, it's not sticky, like what's going on there? The world is just this endless series of magic tricks that the kids want to understand. And so that's, that's an opportunity. In all of education, you can't teach someone something that they don't care to understand. You know, motivation is, the, is the, the first step to any effective learning. And so when you have young children, four or five, six years old, fascinated by the world, wanting to understand it, asking questions, that presents an opportunity. You can actually take a child's question and, and help them explore that question and understand it. And so what we're doing is we're systematically collecting every question that children ask. Children, when I say children, I mean five to ten-year-olds. And we're building a platform for us to create explanations for every one of these questions. We started with the 200 questions that elementary teachers are required to teach in school as according to the various state standards and the new federal standard, the, the national uh, next generation science standards. And so we first answered, we created explanations for those 200 questions. And they're, they're real questions kids have, like what do plants eat? You know, at some point kids come to understand that animals, you know, they need food and water and plants, you know, they, they need water and obviously they need food, right? I mean, they, they grow, like redwood trees are massive, that all that mass came from somewhere. So, well, it turns out that they, scientists wondered this for many years too, and they eventually discovered that plants eat air. It's a crazy claim that plants eat air, but we, that's one of the 200 questions that we'll, we'll answer for kids. Um, we created a a mechanism for elementary teachers to teach their kids scientific discovery, to take real questions kids have and then lead them through the, po through the process of discovering the answer to that question. Um, so last week we taught a million kids in, in classrooms across America, 20% um, of elementary schools, and uh, we're just getting started. We're, we're moving on now from the 200 questions that teachers are required to teach to all the other questions that kids want to know that they'll never learn in classrooms. Um, so. That's mystery science. Um, but if you take one thing away, please help and care about the fact that our children are not learning science. Thank you very much.